what's up, guys? Welcome to Season 2, Episode 8 of the Monday Night Wars. I am Chad Talks, and joining me, as always, is J Mac Gaming. Chad, this is a very interesting Raw right here, all right? A lot of a lot of decisions had to be made on how we're going to handle this shit, and, uh, you know, said decisions were made, and we're going to find out how that... They're gonna, the, 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 I struggle with words a lot. That's okay. <laughs> Let's just get we'll into get it. I fucking brain we'll fart for every time. <laughs> this is why I have to write out a script every time I talk. All right. Uh, okay, well, <clears throat> shit. Got a 67 in what fucking world? Shit. I gotta go book, what? I gotta go book something real quick. Oh no! Pre, 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 I gotta, I gotta. Oh, we're live, pal. We're live. We're live. We're live, pal. I needed to. I, mean, uh, I, guess, I guess we don't have to be. We could just like start over after you book this. I needed the. I needed to um, book turns. Oh. Okay. I needed the book turns because none of this shit makes sense anymore. I gotta. I had. Uh, there's a lot to fix right now. Pre show. Sure. Ah. That JBL, that JBL face turn. Can't wait to see that. All right, that yeah, that got a sixty-seven. Taka, had an, uh, I, th- I think Taka it's had an eighty-three, and um, Taka had an eighty-three in ring. He's so over right now. Holy goddamn shit! He's <laughs> wow. He got so over last month with his program with Rock. Rock really helped him. Oh, if they ever do a tag team of Taka and Stasiak, I think that would blow the game up. Uh, we got a pre-show match right here with Kurt Angle and Steve Carino. Um, 73 right here. Angle 91, Carino 64. It's a fucking banger right here in the pre-show, too. Yeah, wow. Well, Angle's in it. <laughs> yeah, so Angle's in it. And Carino 64. It's not the, you know, nothing, no slouch right there. And then this is the match where all the, the, all the, all the turns have happened. Yeah, cool. I don't care. I need to, it needs to happen. Okay, needs to happen. All my, all my needs, all my guys need to be proper faces and heels. All right. Fuck you, game. All right, Chad. We start. Oh boy, we start off Monday Night Raw with Sean Stasiak. Remember last week he called out Tyson, Lesnar, and Orton, and um, and Tyson. He agreed. They they said they're gonna meet in the middle of the ring tonight. And Stasiak's in the ring. He's like, all right, let's not wait any longer. Come on, boys. And out come. Lesnar, Orton, and Tyson. And Tyson's like, hey, I guess you are an idiot. Guess we still have the numbers. Guess you didn't find anybody to help you come out here. And, you know, Lesnar, Randy, go get them. And they're about to, they surround the ring. And they're about, they jump on the apron. And Tyson jumps on the apron, too. And Austin's fucking glass breaks. And then The Rock, if you smell, and they come out, they hit the ring, Chad. And Stasiak on the mic, and of course, Future Shock scurries away to the announce table area. And like, and Stasiak's like, I, well, I guess I'm smarter than you guys think I am. Hey, Tyson, you guys know Stone Cold and The Rock. And Tyson's looking furious. He's like, oh, what the fuck's going on? the fuck's going on they gotta hold brock back because brock is an absolute machine he just wants to beat anyone up he he's ready to go and vince comes out to the ring chad vince comes out to the, the 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 entrance ramp and he says hey you know what how about instead of all this tension and all this who's gonna fight are you gonna actually fight are you guys actually gonna lay your hands on each other how about we make it official and over the edge, Mike Tyson, your boys, Brock Lesnar, and Randy Orton will go on to face Stasiak, Rock, and Austin. And you're probably thinking, that's a two-on-three match. Well, you look at right here, and Vince pulls out a, a, middle, a middle of the folder with a contract. And it says right here, Mike Tyson, you'll, you are an occasional wrestler. Oh, wow. So at Over the Edge, you will join your boys. Future Shock wow. against Stasiak, Rock, and Austin. I didn't. I thought I could have swore you said he, what, he couldn't wrestle. Yeah, I was wrong. 
Wow, Adam, that's big. Dude, I thought he was just going to be a manager. He can work. Oh, give me Stasiak Tyson now. <laughs> uh, that's the first thing I was looking at when we started booking this Raw. I, I moved it to my other monitor, and I looked. I went to my matches, and I saw Tyson was available to work. I'm like, all right, that changes that storyline. Wow, that's fucking awesome. It was I'm a, excited. It was that a, just meant, ooh. <laughs> it was originally just going to be Rock and Austin against Orton and Lesnar, but... Stasiak and Tyson now also involved. In Last this. time I was in a ring with Tyson, what? It was a good thing, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, in canon, that actually didn't happen, Chad. All right, yeah, you're right. We what? Move, what? We move on. Our opening match of the night, Ace Steel and JBL. They team up and they take on Jushin, Thunder Liger, and a, a King IK. And this got an 81. <laughs> got the fuck out of here. Well, well yeah, you got Liger pulling out 83s and Steel's pulling out 77 but uh decent and miss little, liger so much decent little match right there liger and iakea defeat steel uh, a steel and jbl and liger pins jbl with the liger bomb chip i know i've told you this offline off offline but he liger was literally gonna be, get a world title push yeah. from and he left he left to come <sighs> to me and eddie left to come to me and now just look at him I'm look at him look at him he'd be huge right now he could be huge. Well, he is huge. He is huge, right? He is huge. Billy Gunn is making his way to the ring. We haven't really seen Billy Gunn in a little bit after. I mean, the last time we saw Billy Gunn, he lost to Mark Henry a couple times at Mania and at Backlash. He's in the ring tonight. He's taking on Big Boss Man. And Billy Gunn gets a nice little win in 1229 with a gunslinger, Chad, getting um, getting Mr. Ass back in the winning, winning column. Oh, yeah. This got the worst match of the night, which is not a good sign when Billy Gunn and Big Boss Man have the worst match of the night so far. True. Either, either but a, also, okay. It's also a good thing, I guess. I was just going to say, that's either a good, that, that could be either be bad or really good. Yeah. We move on. Uh, Randy Orton, he's got his he got his first ever singles match here tonight, and he's taking on the boss's son, or, uh, Shane McMahon, and Randy Orton hits Shane with an ozone. And gets the win Ooh. in 11.32. Dark KO zone. Oh, Christian. Christian still unhappy that, you know. He's still unhappy that his win against Kurt Angle really hasn't that mattered that much, you know. He hasn't really done anything. He hasn't really capitalized with it. Even seen him in the world title reign, he hasn't not really doing any much. He takes on, he's, a, he's in a match right here. And he takes on uh, newly acquired Jeff Bearden. <laughs> What are you laughing about? <laughs> what, are you, what are you laughing about? He's a monster. He got an adequate gimmick grading. <laughs> yes, he's an adequate monster. That's a great nickname. The adequate monster, Jeff, Jeff Bearden. Bearden. Former NXT <laughs> world champion Jeff Bearden, by the way. Oh, hold the fuck up. <laughs> oh, oh, go God. <laughs> so Christian gets a nice win over um, Chad's former developmental champion. Uh. <laughs> and then Brock Lesnar, Jim Duggan happens, Chad. And Brock oh, Lesnar yeah. beats him with an overhead belly to belly. Uh, Jim Duggan was not happy to lose this match. True. True. But then he was afraid Brock was going to beat the piss out of him. Yeah. So he went, oh, never mind, actually. Brock came up to him and he said, I heard you complaining about this. And Jim's like, he... <laughs> no. <laughs> I was. I said I didn't want to. I wasn't I said yelling I out "ho." I was yelling out "no." I wasn't afraid. I, saying, I, I wasn't saying "ho." I was saying "ho, oh boy!" I can't <laughs> wait to lose tonight. <laughs> we move on. It is the contract signing for the uh, unification for the tag team titles in Chad. This match is decided in the contract that it is a best two out of three. You got to pin them twice in the middle of the ring. One time to represent each title they won. Get it? Oh, nice. You got to win I, twice I like for each belt. I, I like that. I like that. So, yeah. Stash and stud. Firehouse. Hopefully no one gets hurt right before like last month. Because then we'll have to have interim, interim tag team champion. That'd yeah. be a best three out of two uh, three out of three balls. Yeah. We move on. Mark Henry defeats New Jack. Last week we saw Ken Shamrock defeat New Jack. 
Um, and this week we get Mark Henry defeating New Jack in 10-29 with a power slam. And then after the match, Shamrock comes down to the ring and is about to attack Mark Henry. And he gets him in the suplex. And he's about to, like, German suplex him over his head. And Mark Henry just said, he just stains his ground. He said, no, 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 no. He breaks the hold, and then he turns around and suplexes Ken Shamrock. And Ken Shamrock scurries out of the ring right after. Mark Henry. Beating up Ken Shamrock. Oh, man. Are you, are, you exci- are you excited for that match? That match is just going to be two I am. I think it's going to be two meaty men slapping meat. Two beefy boys just banging beef. Our main event of the night. Austin. Oh, what a fucking banger of a main event. Austin and Rock do their thing again. They get a nice win over the Quebecers in 1459 when Rock taps out Carl Rougeau with a shoulder. Or doesn't tap him out. He pins with a shoulder breaker, Chad. Oh. So just, again, you know, there was a little bit of a, um, you know, not the chemistry wasn't there. The, and there was a little bit of tension between these two. You know, these are long, long rivals, Rock and Austin. A little bit of attention last week, but it seems like they're they're finally getting it together. You know, they're on the same page a little bit, yeah. and um, you know, in a, a couple of weeks they take on Future Shock in a three on three tag match. So they got to be really on the same page here, and they probably have Sean Stasiak in their ear trying to get them on the same page as well. It should be, uh, it should be. I'm pumped as hell for that match. That's gonna be awesome. Even if it's not good, I'm pumped for it. I I, not... but how could it not be good? I don't think it's going to be great, but I think I think 80s. Well, it depends on what Tyson does. I was going to say, because, like, I mean, Stasiak, Rock, and Austin will carry it. If this can get an 84, But if I Tyson think... can work, but if Tyson can work, then this could has potential to be... I mean, it's not going to be, like, it's not going to be 100, but it could be, like, a high a high 80, low 90 match. Yeah, for sure. But then um, we're about to fade to black, and Lesnar and Orton come down and absolutely destroy Rock and Austin. Oh, man. Just like the fucking Nexus did when they just beat the shit out of Cena and Justin Roberts. Just wow. take out the arena. Just Look at this new stable winning by beating <laughs> established main eventers. Yeah, Chad. But they're not all, they're not losing like in WCW. These guys are coming out and just dominating top, t- t- top talent. Making themselves look dominant going into Over the Edge. Gets an 82. Yeah. Come on. Man. <clears throat> Fucking eight, the Quebecers are my main event. What am I supposed to do here? <laughs> okay. Listen. Listen. Story. Story. Exactly. 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 It doesn't matter. But I, am, I, I, I am pumped as hell for that match. I literally, I, I've said that enough today, but I am pumped as hell for that six man. That's going to be awesome. I got more pumped when Tyson was involved. Well, so, well at first I was like, okay. It's not going to be a handicap match. Who's going to be the third guy? I was like, is he call up another? Is another call up? Yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute, he can work. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> well, let's see if he's a good worker. I mean, Vince can work, and he sucks, so you know. Right, right. Um, yeah, but well, hey, over the edge, piping up to be a top show, but a bigger show. Clash the champions. We we move further along in those storylines. On Nitro, up next. Ooh, what's up? We are back. I almost did the intro over. Here. <laughs> we are back. <laughs> about the yelling uh, on, the, on the on the on the air. <laughs> I I realized halfway through me about to, about to say it. I was like, oh wait, no, we're, we're we don't need to do that. Okay, here we are. We are Nitro. Yeah, Justin. Yeah, we're ready for Nitro. We're here, Chad. <clears throat> we are here. Let's get into it, Chad. Let's. Yes, I I agree. Let's and uh, in a pre-show bout that had subpar wrestling a little heat, Minoru Suzuki defeated Ron Killings with a submission. Oh yeah, tapped him out. <clears throat> tapped him right out. Listen. Oh yeah, Minoru off his game, but it's still got a fifty-six, so pretty good. Oh, he's oh Minoru Suzuki, baby. I'm gonna have so much fun, with Minoru Suzuki. I'm happy I decided. You know what? I'm done waiting. Because that's the thing, you know, I, I keep thinking, like, okay, so it's 2000. These guys are still so young, like, I've got time to, like, push these guys. You know, they, they weren't, they weren't, like, megastars at this point in real life, so it's fine. And then I see you over here just, like, hot-shotting Randy and Brock, and I'm over here just like, you know what? Fuck that. We're going for it now. And this is, because Minoru's one of the pro- the, pro- the products of this, hopefully. Oh, so you're copying my style. I'm complimenting you. That was a compliment. Just take it. You stole 
You stole my flow, bar for bar, I didn't word for steal word. Anything. You stole my NXT champion. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna push Jeff Bearden in the moon, and Jeff now I can't. Jeff Bearden has not been in your roster he's, for six he's months. The, he's the <laughs> adequate monster. <laughs> the adequate monster, Jeff Bearden. All right, that's Diner. He's like. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Steiner Shoots. People boo. Steiner's a bad guy. They don't want to see Steiner Shoots. Uh, and Steiner says, oh, I know. I hear you. You're saying Shoots. Shoots. And don't worry, because there's going to be lots of them. You might as well call me Scott the Gunslinger, because I'm shooting from the hip today. All right. Here's the thing. We got a pay-per-view coming up. Clash of Champions. And in that match... I'm going one-on-one -on -one against Rob Van Dam. And Rey Mysterio, he's going one-on-one -on -one against Syndicate member Kevin Nash. Here's the thing. I want to get all of you used. I want to, I want to get all the fans ready. Because I need you to know you're going to feel a lot of emotions with the big bad booty daddy beating Rob Van Dam. But the first thing you're going to feel is sad. Because a lot of you are dumb. And you think... You want to see Rob Van Dam succeed. When in reality, you don't. In reality, you want to see Big Papa Pump, the guy who beat Syndicate member Goldberg at Bash at the Beach not, not a year ago. All right, you guys were cheering me all over Scott Steiner. I couldn't walk down the street without people obsessed with, with Scott Steiner. Scott Steiner's always cared about... His freaks and his pleaks. And he's also loved all of the Steiner fans. But you all decided to turn your back on me. And so now you get to see me kick Raven, uh, RVD's ass. So you're welcome for that. But don't worry. Because after your, 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 your sadness, you know, after you wipe your snot-filled noses on your sweater sleeves from crying, you're going to feel happy. Because you're all going to realize that this is what's best or WCW, and what's best for professional wrestling. And then, it's going to make you ten times happier, and ready and willing to embrace Kevin Nash taking the big gold belt from Rey Mysterio, thus proving that these cruiserweights are nothing more than a flash in the pan, nothing more than puny, tiny, and then he's cut off by Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy comes out, he gets in the ring, and he says, Scott, shut the hell up. All right? I am sick and tired of you coming out and basically saying the same thing every single week. How about you get some more original content? All right? How about you, you say something different? All right? Here's the thing. People are so sick of you, and they're sick of the syndicate already. All right? Listen, we got... The best athletes in professional wrestling. The only thing that you guys should be main eventing are bingo halls and like old country buffets because that's where old people go to eat. All right, these people they're 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 sick of you, Scott. They want to see a change. They want to see a new era of professional wrestling. They want to see high flying, hard hitting, athletic. Championship wrestling. They don't want to see some old guy with, with bleach blonde hair dropping leg dropping legs anymore, brother. They want to see the Hardy Boys. They want to see Rob Van Dam, AJ Styles, Billy Kidman. The list goes on and on and on. And I'll tell you what, Scott. I want to challenge you to a match tonight. You. Versus me. And I'm going to show you exactly what happens when you sleep on a cruiserweight. And Steiner says, yeah, let's do it now. And punt and hits him in the head with a microphone. And Jeff then, like, you know, he gets caught off guard because he was just hit with a freaking microphone. And then Steiner suplexes him. And then the match starts. We got a match right now, Justin. Scott versus Jeff. I'm pulling for Jeff Hardy right here. And in a good match, Scott Steiner defeats Jeff Hardy with a Frankensteiner. Well, he didn't pull for him enough, Justin, because it wasn't enough. Scott Steiner did win. Yeah. And then, and then afterwards, just beats him down. Just, just continues to just beat him down. We're backstage, Stardust and Scott Hall. 
Hopefully. Your unlikely duo make an interesting buddy cop movie. But unfortunately, a buddy cop movie is not a movie, it's a story that the director is trying to tell. And you'll realize that at Clash of Champions when make you come up short and you lose the villain the bad guy Nick I'm gonna give you one final opportunity to call this match off to quit and if you don't and what you saw me do to six last week that crimson mask. That's exactly what's going to happen to you. That's the promo. It's the promo right there. Interesting. Interesting. Oh boy. Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone. Last week, Abby Malenko and Cutie Suzuki were having a match that was going to be absolutely great, but they were attacked by China. Now listen. I don't know what China's deal is, all right? She says that she was owed that match. She said that she deserved it. Well, guess what? In WCW, you're not owed anything, all right? And, and, and you need to put your ego in check, China. You're walking around here with a championship belt around your waist. All right, you already, like, you have a championship. Why don't you stop having a temper tantrum like a little kid and prepare for your battle royal you have at Clash of Champions. It's going to be you defending the 24-7 championship in a 15-person battle royal. You know what? As punishment, China, I think I'm going to up it to 20. It's going to be a 20-person battle royal. All right? Your, your, your odds of walking out with any gold <laughs> drastically went down. Your chances of walking out with the women's championship at Clash of Champions is non-existent. Damn. So that's stay the out. Hero. Stay out of. Stay out of this match. If you don't, consequences will be dire. Because I wanted to see the outcome of that match, and so I think we're going to at Clash of Champions. We're going to get Debbie Malenko versus Beauty Suzuki. And the winner of that match becomes the inaugural WCW Women's Champion. And if anyone interferes in that match, they will be fired on the spot. All right? It's time to, it's time to take the, I'm taking this very seriously. You don't decide matches. I do. Be a lesson to anyone who thinks they can bully themselves into getting me to, to change my mind. Interesting. And China acts in kind by beating the shit out of Amber O'Neill. <laughs> Amber O'Neill got Just... a 16. Oh, well. <laughs> the thing, she was just getting squashed tonight. We gave her $30 to do this. It's 30 bucks and a hot dog, Amber O'Neill. Go you get, go get power bombed by the ninth wonder of the woman, world, China. Oh, we are. And then China, you know, she's, she's celebrating. And Debbie Malenko and Cutie Suzuki, you know, they say, you know, China, listen, Sylvester Stallone may be trying to keep you away from us. But here's the thing. We do think you deserve to be here. All right, you, you, you were one of the founding members of this women's division. You were here before any of us were. Here's the thing. You lost our respect when you attacked us last week. Okay, so here's the thing. The two of us, we're going to fight at Clash of Champions. One of us is going to win. We've already both decided. Whichever one of us win, you're going to be our first target. Because we can't think of any, like, we can't think of any better way than to cement, to cement a legacy of being the first women's champion, than by beating the ninth wonder of the world. Yeah. 
Oh boy. Ah, we got a tag team match tonight. Reverend Devon and Scott Hall taking on Bubba Ray and Mick Foley. Justin, I'm not gonna lie to you, I forgot I booked this match. How'd you forget? <laughs> forgot I booked it. But here we are, nonetheless. <laughs> in a good match, Bubba Ray Dudley and Mick Foley defeat Reverend Devon and Scott Hall when Mick Foley pinned Reverend Devon with a pile driver. Yeah, that's true. Reverend Devon was the weak link in this match, Jeff. Oh, Matt God. Hardy oh, backstage. No. Don't give a mic to Matt Hardy. Yeah, I guess you'd give him a script. <laughs> Matt Hardy backstage. He says, Scott, who attacked my brother Jeff? And I won't have that. All right, so here's the thing. You fought one Hardy, bro. You fought one Hardy, boy. You fought one member of Limitless tonight, and I want a back. So you bring out the biggest and baddest member of the syndicate. You know what? I'll even call my shot. All right, you took out my brother, so I'm going to take out somebody, Scott, that you call a brother. But it's not going to be Rick because anybody could be Rick Steiner. No, I want to take out the man who for so long could never lose. I'm calling out Goldberg tonight. I want Bill Goldberg in the main event. I can't think of any way to show just how limitless I am than by being Goldberg tonight. And this one, this one's for Jeff. This one's for Jeff, baby. Matt versus Goldberg in the main event, Justin. But we have a six-man tag. Of course, Brett and Owen taking on Chris Canyon and Sensei Savage, respectively. Clash of Champions. So they're fighting a six-man tag tonight. Of course, the Savage Dojo and the Flock are still, you know, loosely working together. They are aligned. But in a superb match, Canyon, Savage, and awesome. Defeat Brett, Owen, and Neidhart. When Chris Canyon pins Brett with a roll-up. This rolls up, Brett. Is this going to be what happens at Clash of Champions? Probably. But I'll have to wait and see. But Brett has a microphone. He says, Canyon, you son of a bitch. You rolled me up. All right, listen. You've been on quite a run. You've been beating guys who you have no right to beat. Guys who, who are legends in this industry. And I'll give you a credit, kid. You're on quite the hot streak. But I would love to see you roll me up again. But unfortunately for you, Chris, you're not going to be able to because guess what? Our match at Clash of Champions, you're not going to be able to roll me up to win because pinning me won't do anything. You want to prove just how bad you are, kid? Why don't you step in the ring with one of the best technical wrestlers in the world and to make me tap out? That's right, Chris. Another you versus match. me in a submissions match. Back-to-back -back pay per views with submission matches. Yeah, damn right. It was, it's Bret Hart's match of choice. It was also Kurt Hennig's. Well, listen. <laughs> Both did, technically, did you technically stop. I didn't. For, I listen. I didn't. <laughs> oh, could I? <laughs> I? I booked it. I booked it. Coming from the man that earlier in this show said, I forgot I booked this match. <laughs> yes, you're not wrong. Ray is backstage, you know. I said, Ray, Ray, are you, everyone wants to know, are you a member of Limitless? And Ray says, you know what? I, I'm not a member of Limitless, but it's not because I, I don't believe in the cause. It's not, but it's because it, I do. All right, they all have very valid points. But here's the thing. All right, I'm the world champion. All right, I've already proven. I'm, I've already, I'm already on that level. Me being there just overshadows what they're trying to do. And I, and I, and it, I don't want it to be about me for Limitless because it's about them. I'm the world champion. I need to focus on my own career, all right? I got to focus on my own matches. I got a match against Kevin Nash. And even though the syndicate is also feuding with Limitless, you know, they, they, they have me as an ally from afar, but, but I'm not a member, all right? Kev, wherever you are. And then Kev says, I'm right behind you. And he turns around, boots Ray in the head, and then power bombs him onto the concrete floor and just starts pummeling Ray. He jumped him from behind and took out Ray Mysterio, Justin. Yes, yes, he did. Poor Ray Mysterio. Oh, I feel like, uh, you know, every month leading up to the pay-per-view, he gets destroyed. So, I mean, this poor kid. Listen, he's the littlest under. He's the world's greatest underdog, you know? That's Yeah, I guess so. Main event tonight. Ooh, 86. Main event 
Matt Vardy versus Goldberg, and they make a spectacle of it, right? Goldberg comes out, and he has his Goldberg entrance from the locker room. Goldberg! But it's just a sea of booze, but Goldberg's doing his dock, his, his walk with the music. And then all of a sudden, it pans out, and you hear Matt's music. And Matt, he comes out from the Limitless locker room, and he does the exact same thing. They hype it up like it's a big spectacle. Matt Hardy versus Goldberg. And in a good match, Goldberg defeats Matt Hardy in 1529 with a spear. But Matt Hardy went 15 minutes with Goldberg, Justin. That's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Well, that's the end of the show. An 89. Yeah. 89. We'll take it. We yeah. will take it. A lot of promos that saved you. Listen, wait, no. The performance of Matt Hardy saved us, Justin. Matt Hardy got a 60. I wouldn't say he did. <laughs> he got... The performance... Both Hardy boys put this show on their back and said, we got ya. And they both lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, how about you guys, uh, you know, how about we get to a show, you know, a real a real man show in SmackDown. Oh, Chad. yeah, Thunder's coming up. All right, we are here for SmackDown. I am looking forward to this show, Justin. SmackDowns have been intriguing as of late. Especially this one, Chad. <laughs> we were, hmm, we were, why, why, why do you say that? Why do you say it like that? Breaking news, there is a special announcement tonight from Eric Bischoff. <clears throat> oh, he's quitting and coming back to WCW? We're going to have to find out. Our pre-show match of the night, it is Bam Bam taking on the adequate monster himself, Jeff Bearden. I um, love that gimmick. Are you yawning during my show again? Oh, that's how excited I was for that match. Bam Bam gets the win in 7.34 <laughs> with a power bomb. We move on. It's the opening angle, Chad. There's not much really to say here, all right? Well, there's no big promo, okay? this is We're just setting up the main event tonight. Uh, it's just really Triple H. You know, really getting in Shawn Michaels' case of really, like, where his heart lies in DX, you know? You know, is he going to be with Triple H or is he going to be with Brian Danielson and, and uh, Triple H, you know? And Shawn says, hey, I'll be with you tonight. I will, we'll, we'll, we'll team up. We take on Eddie and Edge and, you know, I'll show you that my, you know, my heart's still with DX and yourself. So, I mean, so Danielson will be in a match tonight, but I won't be out there to help him. I won't be out there to manage him tonight, so... We move on. Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle. Eric Bischoff makes the big announcement, Chad. Chad, I don't think you're going to like this one much. I don't think you're going to like this one. Chad, remember back in Survivor Series where I had a five-on-five -five match where I gave everyone title matches if they won? Do you remember that? Correct. Remember, Correct was, yes. remember when you ran that same gimmick four months later? Remember how mad I was I, about you stealing my gimmicks? I recall. It's time to steal one back. <laughs> okay. Eric Bischoff has announced that WWF and All Japan Women's Pro Wrestling have come to an agreement. And at Over the Edge, we will have our first WWF Women's Champion announced and declared. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> he says the debut match will be a triple threat match. Where two representatives of A J uh, W P W or whatever the, the initials are for All Japan Women's Pro Wrestling, A Aja Kong and Minami Toyota will take on the rising star from TNA, Mickey James, and one of them will be the first ever WWF Women's Champion. So how do you feel about that announcement? Yeah. Really? Listen, anything that gives a spotlight on women, I'm all about. Because I am an equal opportunist here. <sighs> it just feels great that... <sighs> that being said, that being said, it's so nice to know that SmackDown needs help uh, with their ratings by being like, oh, what's WCW doing? Oh, they have a women's division? Well, fuck, let's copy it. It's nice to know that, that you know, you need my former WCW guy to make my uh, this announcement, too. I, that was a good touch. Yeah. Well, it, it's, he also announces that it's not an, only a SmackDown thing. It is a WWF thing. So the Women's Championship will be on Raw and SmackDown, not just only SmackDown, Chad. Okay, okay. And it'll just it'll showcase the best women's wrestlers around the world. Well, second best. No, they're the best. 
the best are on Nitro and, and Thunder. We move on. Opening match of the night, Fig and Tony Mamaluke. Oh, they got great chemistry here, Chad. Oh. Uh, Fig gets his first ever match, his first ever win. Oh, good for Fig. He hits him with the thank you, Fig German suplex. I thought he hit him with the big Fig energy. The big Fig energy gets the win right here. <laughs> we move on. It's Bam Bam and Booker T. They're warming up backstage. Uh, I don't know what they're warming up for. Neither one of them are in a match tonight, Chad. But they both have declared themselves uh, participants in next month's King of the Ring. Yes, Chad, King of the Ring 2000 is next month. It's going to be the biggest tournament yet. 32 men will be in this tournament. 16 from Raw and 16 from SmackDown. With the winners, one from Raw and one from SmackDown. That match to main event next month's pay-per-view at King of the Ring. Wow. It's going to be the biggest tournament of all time. Who's going to win? Who knows, Chad? Who knows? But we first we have our first ever participants for that said tournament. We move on. Danielson goes out there. He doesn't have Shawn Michaels out there with him. And uh, without his mentor, without his teacher, he loses to Steve Wright. Steve Wright, SmackDown oh. Tag Team Champion, pins Brian Danielson in 809 with a side suplex. This, this SmackDown stinks so far. Yeah. <laughs> not good. Not, not, not great. <laughs> not great. Oh, man. But it's PJ Black getting uh, healed up, treated up by his his woman, his girlfriend, Stephanie McMahon. Well, last week we saw Test Big Boot. PJ Black and um, vowed to take – he cashed in his uh, Survivor Series title match and vowed to take that belt – off of PJ Black and PJ Black says he's not going to let Test of all people take this belt off of him. Move on. Speaking of Test, he takes on Nova. Nova. And defeats him in 840 with a pump handle slam. Nova. Good for Test. Nova outworking Test. Just what I wanted to see. Oh, good. Perfect. Good for Nova. <laughs> Paul White. Paul White. Remember a couple weeks ago, he has his plan. He he gave a plan to uh to Eric Bischoff to uh, you know help um you know that you know help you know rest his case for why he should be the number one contender for this WWF World Title. And uh, his plan was to fight guys from CMLL, Chad, in a little Ooh. showcase over the next few weeks to just showcase that he's not only a great wrestler in WWF, but he can take guys he can take on guys around the world. And it was his first match of this this series of gauntlet matches. He takes on Cybernetico and uh, gets the win in 12-18 with a choke slam. Sorry, my phone just went off. How unprofessional. It was just the fans saying, oh, I can't wait for this women's division here in WWF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Cybernetico getting a, you know, a 72 right there, Chad. Are you excited for that? Yeah, I mean, maybe listen. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. I'm excited for whatever whoever he's facing next. What do you? How? What do you know about Cybernetico, Chad? Not much. Interesting. We have our co-man event of the night, Rick Ruger. Rick Ruger. Rick Ruger. <laughs> Lex Luger takes on Ric Flair, and it about that had decent wrestling and good heat. Lex Luger gets the upset win, hits the torture rack on Ric Flair in 12:56. Um, after Ricky Steamboat came out and distracted Ric Flair. Remember, it is Flair Steamboat. If Steamboat loses, he will retire. And, you know, Steamboat getting in Flair's head, getting in the dirtiest player in the game's head right before their big match in nine days, Chad. Big match right there. Nine nine days. But good man. for Luger getting a win here, too. And <laughs> we have Taker, Chad. This is me popping a wheelie in my motorcycle. He's yeah, it's exactly what it is. He, it's this is Jesus Christ. This is uh, what do you mean, Jesus Christ? A waste of the Undertaker, Jeff. Chad, it's this is Taker driving to the King of the Ring. Oh, okay. He's making his mark at King of the Ring. What do you mean, what a waste? I only have so much time here, Chad. <laughs> I'm on my way to all Japan women's wrestling. I'm picking up Aja Kong. <laughs> Our main event of the night, it is DX taking on Eddie and Edge. 
an exceptional match. Eddie and Eddie Guerrero and Edge defeat DX in 1810 when Eddie Guerrero pins Triple H after Brian Anderson came out to help, you know, his boys and DX and accidentally hit Triple H, Chad. Accidentally hit him with the chair. Ah, that idiot. The idiot. Triple H. And then after the match, Triple H gets in his face, pedigrees Brian Danielson and Shawn Michaels, and he gets in Shawn Michaels' face. He says, it's either you, it's either him or me. And Shawn Michaels is left to make that decision as the show goes off air. DX, there's turmoil in DX. DX is not fine. And he gets an 89. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. King of the Ring announced. Women's Championship announced. A lot of shit's going down, Chad. Are you excited for it? I hope Aja Kong wins. Me too. But speaking of speaking of Aja Kong, we'll see you for Thunder. All right, we are here. It is WCW Thunder and Justin. What a show we've got in store. Yeah, define what or define what a show. Well, we'll find out what a show, because a show is coming on now. Who's coming on now? See, in the show. See now? Do you have John Cena? We got a pre-show match. Alex Wright defeated Sabu with an STF. Yeah, I got a 73. Alex Wright, you know, hasn't really done anything in the last couple weeks, and I thought, let's get him on the show. Yeah. This might be the first time ever that back-to-back nights, father and son, have won matches. There we go. Steve Wright tapping out Brian Danison, and Alex Wright defeated Sabu. Tapping out, Sabu. Tapping out, Sabu. Let's go. Scott Steiner and Kevin Nash, they both just hype up their uh, upcoming matches. You know, Syndicate, they're taking both ch- world championships. Well, and, uh, and you know, and they just they just shit on RVD and Rey Mysterio. Kevin Nash was like, Rey might not even show up. Flash of Champions after I beat him down. And then they put over the fact that both of them are teaming tonight to take on the Hardy Boys in the main event. Oh, so we got Nash and Steiner taking on the Hardys here in the main event tonight. Let's go. Oh, and a decent match. Minoru Suzuki defeats El Hijo de Santo by pinfall. <sighs> Look at that. Good for, good, for, good for Minoru Suzuki. How the mighty have fallen. It was crazy. Six months ago, Chad brings in Al Hio Del Santo, and he says, he let it, "We literally had a big, we had a promo make with a big announcement." <laughs> he says, "This is going to be my main event superstar for years to come," and now he's in the curtain jerker, losing to Minoru Suzuki. But it's Minoru Suzuki. Yeah, that's with the hindsight of what Suzuki is now. In this canon, this universe, Minoru Suzuki is like fucking Hornswoggle in 07 SmackDown. I don't think he's that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his fucking headband. <laughs> That's all because we could have. The only other pictures of him when he's an old man. It's, be- <laughs> it's because he wasn't good as a young lion. <laughs> in a poor match. Too cool. <laughs> Defeated right to censor. But Scotty Too Hotty pins Stevie Richards with a jumping bulldog. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. They're getting too cool. This too is... cool. Continue their run. This is my face when you book El Hijo de Santo to lose. Right here. <laughs> uh, after the match, right to censor, they're mad, they're bummed, and then Redacted come out. And they go, listen, we've been losing. We've been losing a lot. But listen, maybe there's something to these stables, all right? There's Syndicate. There's Limitless. But what if... Flock. Since I savage the flock, dojo, the flock, the, the flock, the hearts, the the hearts. Yes, thank you, audience. The flock, the dojo, the heart foundation. But what <laughs> if redacted joined forces with right to censor, and we formed we formed some kind of some kind of squad, right? Some kind of squad, and in that squad, everybody had a job, right? Everybody had a certain job. It did well. What could we call that group? Um, Alfred Snow says, the Job Squad. Then they all look at Al, Al Snow and they go, You might be on to something, kid. You might be on to something. And then they all walk away. Hmm, interesting. 
Interesting. New stable for me, Justin. All of my former guys finally getting to do something. Love to see it. Name out of that. <laughs> and he got a singles match. The TV champion Stardust taking on Mikey Whipwreck with a bulldog. Uh, they just don't seem to click a bad, well, an awkward little match right here. You know, Mikey, yeah, that's a shame. That's a, it's a, time to fire. Time to fire Mikey Whipwreck. Time to fire Stardust. Maybe it's his fault. It's no one's fault. Sometimes they just don't click. Uh, Mick Foley comes out, and he uh, he, he uh, turns around in uh, the mandible claw. But this time, you know, unlike last time where Scott Hall was able to save him, uh, it doesn't. Uh, Mick Foley gets the full mandible claw in. Stardust is, like, freaking out. He's, like, starting to, like, fade, but he's still trying to fight back. And Mick Foley has a microphone with his other hand. And he says, you want to take on me? Huh? You want to threaten to make me bleed? I've been bleeding my entire career, Stardust. And listen, you managed to do something that you should never do with Mick Foley. You pissed him off. Listen, I'm I'm at my worst when I'm mad. I'm at my worst when I'm violent. And Stardust, if you want to fight, if you want to bleed, that's fine. We can fight and we can bleed. And I'll tell you what, Stardust. At Clash of Champions, you versus me, television championship, and I'm going to beat you. For six, and I'm gonna beat you because I just like violence and fighting people. And how about this? It's gonna be a, a first blood match. Foley versus Stardust, first blood match. First yeah. blood match. Hmm, interesting. And so basically, Daniels and AJ Styles. You know, they're they're uh, they 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 were uh, they were shit talking. Um, uh, the syndicate and Rick Steiner and Horace Hogan, you know, they're, they're, they're related and or friends with some of those guys. And they, you know, they were mad. They challenged him to a tag team match. Then a decent match, Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles defeat Rick Steiner and Horace Hogan in 11 08 when AJ Styles pinned Horace Hogan with a Styles clash. Huh. Horace Hogan. Good for you, buddy. Getting on the card again. Yes. Yes. All right. We move on. And uh, that was the promo that they cut just now backstage. Um, so just pretend that went before it. I forgot that we booked <laughs> this to go after it. <laughs> yeah, buffoon. <laughs> yeah. And we have a three-on-one handicap match. Stallone booked China to compete. And it was against Disco Fury, Disco Inferno, and D'Lo Brown. And in a poor match, China defeated Disco Fury, Disco Inferno, and D'Lo Brown. When China pinned Disco Fury with a powerbomb. Yeah, there you go. Decent little match right there. Poor D'Lo. Yeah. Poor D'Lo. Poor D'Lo. After the match, Sylvester Stallone, he's he's you know he's like, you know, China. Clearly, you still, you know, clearly, you know, you still aren't learning this lesson that I'm giving you. You see, I saw the way you were you were you were you were you power bombed. Uh, Disco uh, Fury, you were there was a lot of aggression that I think you still have, and and I, I I'm worried that you're gonna do something once again that's gonna that, that you're gonna regret or or try to ruin the show that I have set up. And so you know I think clearly to me you need more opportunity to unleash some of this this anger that you have, and I can't think of a better way than a Clash of Champions at twenty person in Battle Royal. Now is going to be a twenty-five person battle royal. That's right. All right. You want you want, you want to continue to 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 be this aggressive? Well, I'll give you the opportunity to. And, and, and that's just because I am a caring GM, and, and you can thank me later. What an asshole! China now has to defend her championship, her twenty-four-seven title, in a twenty-five person battle royal. Justin, how is she even going to win? I don't. I don't know. Do you even have 25 other guys? Oh, I'm sure I'll figure it out. And our main event. Steiner and Scott. Or, uh, Steiner and Nash taking on the Hardy Boys in a good match. The Steiners. Steiners, the Steiner, and the Nash <laughs> defeat the Hardy Boys. When Scott Steiner pinned Jeff Hardy with a Frankensteiner. I mean, yeah. Hardys just can't get anything done against these guys. Let me list. Do not look well. Well, at least Rob Van Dam looks good, but everyone else struggling. 
Speaking of Rob Van Dam, Rob Van Dam and Rey Mysterio, who was attacked by Kevin Nash last week, they run out and they uh, they start a brawl with Nash and Steiner. Interesting. Last week or on Nitro, we saw Rey Mysterio say, "I'm not part of Limitless," and now here he is, aligned with Limitless. I think he just wants to get some payback on Kevin Nash for attacking it. Well, we'll have to find out where his alliances actually lay on Nitro next week. But Chad, an eighty-six. Not not too shabby, Justin. Not too shabby. Not too shabby indeed, Chad. A decent little show for Chad. But sure. Yeah. Hell yeah. Next week, our go homes. You got the. You got the go homes. And then we are have our pay-per-views. Chad, any wise words for the fans at home? Uh, And the millions listening around the world? No. All right.